Thank you, gentlemen. Again, this year, we are most pleased and honored to have the Honor and Color Guard, Sons of the American Legion Detachment of Maine. Would they please present the colors? Please be seated. Once again, we'd like to thank the Sons of American Legion Detachment of Maine, and they will be retiring the colors when we close the ceremonies this evening. How about a hand for that band? And their band leader, Mr. Cole Inglis. Hard to believe they arrived here yesterday and have come to that in a day and a half. 
I welcome you all to Boise State, and we'll be talking between the delegates and us a little later on, so we're going to move right along with the program. Our first distinguished guest is the new president of Thomas College, our host desk basically for this week. Please give a warm Boise State welcome to President Laurie Lachance. for that very, very warm welcome. Good evening. It is really an honor for me to welcome Boise State to the campus of Thomas College. As an educational institution, we're especially pleased to welcome the premier organization dedicated to educating our future leaders about the role of government in our daily lives. The mission of Thomas College is to prepare students for success in their personal and professional lives and for leadership and service in their communities. By being selected to participate in this very prestigious group, Boys State, you have all demonstrated that you share this goal. You too are seeking opportunities to lead and to serve, and you recognize that there is power in learning all that you can so that when your time comes and when you are called to lead, that you'll be prepared to do so. Our state and our nation are challenged in these times. There are political, economic, and environmental problems that require the very best minds and the most creative solutions that we can design. Technology can help, but it requires intelligence and understanding that's crafted by people like yourselves who have availed themselves of the opportunities such as Boys State to learn all they can about crafting solutions that are practical and which carry with them the compassion and care that have always distinguished our government at its best. You are the individuals who are going to craft the solutions for the people of Maine, for the United States and beyond. Remember, there are world leaders such as George Mitchell who helped craft peace in Northern Ireland that made his start in Waterville, Maine. The motto of the state of Maine is Dirigo, Latin for I lead. During your time here at Thomas College, I would encourage you to listen very carefully, to learn much, to devote yourself to all that's being offered on your behalf. Then, when you return to your homes, your schools, and ultimately to the college and the career that you choose, be alert to the opportunities to lead and be ready and willing to accept the responsibility to do so wisely, intelligently, and with great, great enthusiasm. I wish you a tremendous experience while you're here at Boise State, and I welcome you today and always to Thomas College. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. That has never been said before at this college, has it? You're the first. The first. Broke a glass ceiling. I think Thomas made a wise choice. Congressman Mitchell and I know Laura from way back. She was a state economist when we, Mike and I were in the legislature, so it's a welcome face. Our next speaker is, has not even been in this position 24 hours. The new state commander, Department of Maine American Legion, Mr. John Hargrove. Normally when I would stand up here as command of the American Legion, I'd have my gavel and I'd one wrap and you're set down. Thank you very much for that warm welcome. 
and I welcome you to Thomas College in Boys State. Boys State is a program that the American Legion has sponsored for, uh, I don't know the exact number of years, but for many, many years. Uh, we are proud to give this opportunity to you young men. Uh, you'll have the opportunity this week to uh, learn how our state government works from the local level through our county system and our state government and there will be some of you that, who may have an opportunity to go on to Boys Nation. It's an excellent program. You have an excellent staff, excellent director, and this is an excellent facility. During this week, you will have an opportunity to learn the art of compromise and practice the uh, skill of persuasion. Politics is that. You will listen to our representative, uh, Mike Mishu, in, in a few minutes, and he will explain some of that to you. You will also have an opportunity to forge friendships that may last a lifetime coming from this. You've already forged some, I'm sure, with the band. You guys do an incredible job. I've been uh, a greeter, and I think I've, hopefully I've uh, already shook each one of your hands as you arrived this afternoon. There may have been a few I missed. Uh, I enjoy doing that. It's nice to meet you young men. You also will have an opportunity to forge a vocation that will last a lifetime, that may last a lifetime, and, uh, and, or an avocation that should last a lifetime. It is important in our country and under our form of government that we participate. And one of the things you will learn is that process of, of uh, participation. And with that, I welcome you again and thank you very much. Thank you, Commander. Our final speaker for the opening ceremonies has been coming to Boy State on Sunday to open the ceremonies, I believe, as long as he's been in Congress. Hasn't missed a year. Uh, Congressman Mishu and I served 16 years together in the Maine Legislature, and he may talk to you about how he started, why he ran, and ironically, one of the reasons I ran was to help finish cleaning up the Kennebec River, which I grew up on, and he wanted to do the same thing for the Penobscot River, where he grew up. So you never know why you will enter public office, but there's always going to be a reason, something that gets you fired up enough to put your name out there. And the congressman has a little story he wants to tell you about his decision and why he decided to serve in public office. And a former colleague of Congressman and I, who's from the other party that we were, but is a, still a friend of ours, said to me the other day, he says, if you get to see the fella that lugged the lunch pail and punched in at the mill, who's now in Congress, would you ask him to give me a call? He says, I have a lot of respect for that fella. So I pass it on to the Congressman and he'll be giving former Colonel Marsh a call. It's my pleasure and honor to introduce from the 2nd District State of Maine, Congressman Michael Michaud. Thank you very much, Mr. Jakes, for that very kind and generous introduction, and also for inviting me back uh, again this year uh, for the opening ceremonies. I know some of the, the staff here and volunteers, and Mr. Jakes can pretty much tell you what I'm going to say, because uh, I've heard it over and over, but hopefully uh, for the uh, Boy State participants, uh, it'll be the first time you've heard it. Uh, but before I be begin, uh, I would like to actually congratulate uh, President Lachance and the Commander uh, on your new positions. I, I know uh, it's uh, exciting for both of you and want to wish you uh, the very best as you uh, move forward uh, as well. And I also would like to thank uh, the American Legion 
and all the Maine veterans for their service uh, to our country. Uh, the American Legion has been a sponsor of this, and I really appreciate uh, their willingness, not only for Boy State, but all, all the volunteer work and effort that the American Legion uh, has done uh, over the years for people here in the state of Maine, for the veterans and for, for other uh, charity uh, type of programs. I want to thank uh, them uh, for doing that as well. And just out of curiosity, I'd ask uh, the participants in the audience, uh, how many of you have a, a parent or a relative who have served in Iraq and Afghanistan, if you'd please stand? Thank you very much. It looks like it's a, a pretty good uh, percentage of, uh, of Boy State participants who have a, a relative that served in Iraq and Afghanistan. So you, you can go ahead and sit down now. <laughs> For those of you who, who did not stand, I don't know if you have relatives that served in other uh, wars or not, uh, whether it's the Gulf or, or Vietnam. Or, or other uh, wars or conflicts, uh, but I want to say, uh, being the ranking member of the Veterans Affairs Committee, uh, that if you don't know someone who have served or is currently serving, that you ought to reach out and tr try to talk to those individuals. Uh, one of the best decisions I ever made when I first got elected to Congress was to ask for a seat on the Veterans Affairs Committee, a and I learned so much uh, from our veterans here in the state of Maine and, and all across the country. But also, I had an opportunity to go to Iraq and Afghanistan several times. And, and what I saw over there, uh, just the four or five short days for every trip that I've been, is just amazing. Uh, and what these soldiers go through is extraordinary. Uh, you know, the stress, uh, the danger that they face uh, each and every day. And having had a chance to see some of our wounded warriors from Maine over at uh, Walter Reed, and what they are going through as well. It's just amazing. So I'd encourage you to reach out to, uh, to your veterans here in the state of Maine, talk to them, uh, but also to thank them for their service. And for those that you, uh, who stood, I, I know that you know what it's like uh, having one of your uh, parents uh, uh, serve in Iraq and Afghanistan. So uh, I wanna just uh, encourage you to do that. I also would like to recognize uh, the volunteers uh, for this program as well. Similar to as a member of Congress or President Lachance or the commander, uh, we can't do it alone. Uh, we gotta have good staff uh, and volunteers to uh, help us make us look good. Uh, so I wanna thank all the volunteers uh, for this uh, particular program. You've uh, done a great job, and I know that there'll be another uh, successful year uh, for you as well. And I uh, especially want to recognize uh, Jake uh, Dumas. He was a Boy State participant, and now actually, well, he's a counselor, and I'm proud to say that he's now an intern in my Lewiston office, doing a great job for me as well. So thank you, uh, Jake, and uh, glad to see you back here at uh, Boy State. Uh, As you all know, Boy State is among the most respected and selective educational program of government instruction for high school students. Uh, you are here not only to learn about how to, to govern at all levels, uh, but also and hopefully to become active in your communities as well. For those of you who want to enter public office, I'd say welcome. We definitely need young leaders in all levels of office here in the state as well as the national level. Our nation cannot solve our problems without new people and fresh ideas. And that's when I look at this crowd today, that's what you are, bringing fresh ideas out. And I look, uh, looking back when I was your age a number of years ago, if someone had told me uh, when I graduated from high school that I'd be a member of the Maine legislature, I'd say that's crazy, because I never planned on getting involved in politics at all, let alone be a member of Congress. Uh, what I've, uh, one of the interesting things is, uh, and I want to tell you my, my journey and why uh, I want to tell you my journey, how I got from uh, working in a paper mill uh, to working on Capitol Hill. Uh, I was one of six uh, children growing up in northern Maine in the town of Medway. Uh, I never forgotten how important community is uh, for me and my family. 
and how hardworking people here in the state of Maine, uh, how it was for them to be able to provide a living uh, for their families as well. But when I graduated uh, from high school, I think times were a little simpler than they are today. Most young people went to work at the economic base in their community. For me, it was Great Northern Paper Company. And I know for some of you, if you were in the county, it might have been Fraser Paper Company or, or Scott Paper or whatever. Uh, I went to the same mill that my father worked in for 43 years, my grandfather worked there before him for 40 years, and I worked there for uh, over 29 years before getting elected to Congress. I loved my job at the mill. But what got me involved in politics, as you heard Mr. Jakes mention a little bit earlier, I was concerned about the pollution the mill that I worked at was causing in the Penobscot River. There's a little cove uh, in, the, in the Penobscot River, you practically can walk across it because of the sludge and the pollution from the very mill that I was working at. But I also knew that you had to protect the environment as well. And you couldn't meet the balance between jobs and, and the environment. And uh, when I first got elected to the Maine Legislature, not much older than, than some of you folks, I was uh, only 25 years uh, old at the time, a lot of people didn't think I'd be able to, uh, to win because I never was involved in uh, public poli uh, politics before. You know, but I ran uh, for the legislature and I didn't think I was going to win either and I did and I was very fortunate at the time to get on the Energy and Natural Resources Committee with, uh, with Mr. Jakes and at that point in time in the 80s, uh, the Energy and Natural Resources Committee was actually one of the premier committees to get on even above uh, the Appropriation Committee. And I ended up uh, serving uh, 22 years in Maine Legislature at that same time. I still uh, uh, worked at Great Northern Paper Company. I had to go back home on the weekends and work uh, in the mill. I spent uh, seven terms in the House, 14 years, and then I ran for the State Senate. Likewise, when I ran for the Maine State Senate, actually I had to run against a Republican millionaire incumbent in a Republican district. And it was a very tough uh, district, uh, but I worked very hard because I felt strongly about representing the people uh, in northern Maine, and, and I won that race. And eventually, I became president of the Senate. Uh, Eleven years ago, uh, after my term limits came in effect and I was going to go back to work in the mill uh, full time, uh, I was encouraged to run for Congress. Uh, and at that point in time, the, uh, a lot of people say, well, you ought to run, you ought to run. I say, I'll think about it, think about it. And, uh, and finally, I decided to run because what I realized is uh, I kept just putting people off, saying, no, think about it. Uh, but what I was really doing is just making the excuses of uh, why I shouldn't run uh, for Congress. Uh, I ran in a six-way Democratic primary. I uh, won the primary and actually went on to uh, run in the fall election. Uh, Maine was actually one of uh, 12 states in the country where it was a, a top uh, a congressional seat. Uh, out of 435, we were uh, one of the top 12 uh, seats that everyone was focusing on because it was an open seat. Uh, and the interesting thing is uh, when I decided to run for Congress, uh, I also had a lot of naysayers. Uh, people told me that, uh, you know, why are you running? You're not a millionaire. You're not an attorney. You had a high school education. You lived, you know, in the wrong part of the state. And it's not the norm for a mill worker to be elected to the United States Congress. Well, I decided to run anyway because I felt strongly about trade policy, and that's what really got me motivated uh, to run for, for Congress. Uh, so I ran, and I did win. And the reason why I tell you that story is because no matter how much money that you have or you don't have, no matter where you come from, no matter what status in life you are, it's you and you alone that can make that difference. You have the power to turn your dreams into reality. And yes, it probably you have a few bumps in the road as you try to reach your goal, but just pick yourself back up and move forward. During that campaign, my first campaign, I hit a lot of bumps on the road as well. And it's very discouraging at times because I begin to question whether or not I could be a member of Congress. 
Because some of the things that I ran into were some of the things, the reason why people told me I shouldn't run in the first place. But I just picked myself back up, went out there, met the folks in, in the second congressional district, and just kept moving forward. And I won that election and every election uh, since then. And I made my journey through public service, quite frankly, because there was a small group of family and friends that kept encouraging me never to give up, to go after your dreams. If you really feel strongly about it within here and you're committed to doing it, you can do it, regardless of what some people might tell you. So I'd encourage each and every one of you to never stop dreaming, to never let someone say that you can't do something and go after what you really believe in. And that's what I want to tell you here this week as well. You know, go after what you want. If you're running for office here at Boy State, go after it. As you debate some of the issues here, do it in a respectful way as well. And don't be afraid to reach across the aisle to your opponent to talk to them. I think all too often in public office, people tend to hold a grudge. And that is one of the worst mistakes you can do, whether you're running for office or in your regular life, is to hold a grudge. Because you will never know whether that individual that uh, got you upset, you might need him down the road or her down the road to help you out. The last thing I want to say uh, is, is the fact that when I left the Maine State Senate to run for Congress, at that point in time we had 17 Democrats, 17 Republicans, and one Independent. A lot of people thought it was going to be a nightmare, because depending on any given day, if someone was sick, it would depend on who was going to be in the majority in the State Senate. We started off the session like we did every session. Republicans with caucus, Democrats with caucus, then we go over the end of the session. The problem being is the caucus has never ended on time because we had some folks there like Mr. Jakes that might get off on the telling a fishing story or a hunting story, and so we never ended up at the same time. So I suggested to my counterpart that why don't we just have a chairs meeting? Because half the chairs were Republicans, half the chairs were Democrats. It should speed up the process. And Rick Bennett at the time said, well, let's try it out, see if it does. And it did. It sped up the process tremendously. But the second thing that it did was the fact that every day we had Republicans and Democrats and one independent in the same room going over a calendar in an informal way that built up trust and open line of communications. And that is so important. And that's what's missing today, quite frankly, both in Augusta as well as in Washington, D.C. So once again, I want to say have a great time here at Boy State. Don't hesitate to ask questions to any of the counselors. And if you want any fishing tips or hunting tips, make sure you talk to Mr. Jace because he knows where they're all at. Just uh, have several of you talk to him, make sure he tells you the, the same place, because he's got several of them out there. So once again, thank you very much, and God bless each and every one of you. Thank you.